Thank you, Speaker. Honourable Senators, I rise today to speak on Bill C-242, an act to amend the Immigration and Protection Act with specific reference to temporary resident visas for parents and grandparents. I am officially the critic of this bill, and the dictionary defines a critic as someone who, uh, who finds fault uh, with the substance or disagrees with it or has an unfavorable opinion of it. Well, if that is the case, critics, uh, colleagues, I stand before you as a complete imposter, because in truth, there is very little in this bill that, that is not to like. And I would here, like here. to congratulate MP Karl Seelbach Seelbach, Seelbach and Senator Victor O oh for bringing this bill to our attention. This bill is very personal to me, as it is to the many, many immigrants and aspiring immigrants. Five short years after I arrived in Canada, I sponsored my parents to come and join me as we were building a new life. You have heard me say often in this chamber that I am only a senator today because my mother stayed behind to look after the children and the home while I worked long hours, evenings, and weekends. My application to sponsor my parents on a permanent basis was approved in six short months. Now, of course, that is a pipe dream. And we have had to find new pathways and new innovations and alternative routes to holding families together. Whilst I did not agree with many of the immigration policies of Prime Minister Harper, I must say that the expedited pathway for parents and grandparents uh, through super visas was frankly a super innovation. It recognized that many parents and grandparents want a secure yet nimble pathway for extended stays without necessarily wanting to move permanently to Canada. They colleagues have lives of their own in their countries, they have homes, and I know that many dread our winters. This is not to say that there are not others who want to live permanently in Canada, and I will remark on this cohort a little later in my remarks. This bill is an expression of our larger ambitions for what I would say is a bigger, bolder Canada. We know that roughly one quarter of Canada's population is or has been a landed immigrant or permanent resident in the past. Recently, the government announced its ambition to bring in half a million immigrants. And further, a recent poll by Enveronics underlines that seven in 10 Canadians support these immigration measures. I personally believe that more immigration done right is good for Canada, it's good for immigrants, and it's good for all of us. And this bill on parents and grandparents moves us in that direction. For a simple reason. Colleagues, I believe Canada has a competitive edge over other countries because of our stance on parents and grandparents. We know that there are backlogs in every business stream in the system. We know that there are challenges in integration. And yet, immigrants are not turning their backs on Canada. In fact, the queue to get in is getting longer and longer. And so you may well ask why. Well, there are a number of really important reasons. First, we are a safe and secure country. Second, we have an excellent public education system and a public health system which may be under stress at this point. And for a final touch, it is our capacity to welcome parents and grandparents. This final bit is our secret sauce. This sets us apart from other countries. It is our jewel in the crown. Yet, family re reunification has had a very bumpy ride in the last 10 years. The demand has grown. The numbers for, per for permanent family reunification of parents and grandparents are limited to 20,000 a year and are scooped up in a nanosecond. And because this is an online application, I always worry about 
who are those who are able to fill out the application in a nanosecond and who are left outside. The government has resorted to different strategies to try and manage the waiting time, including instituting at one point a lottery system, which in my view is an abrogation of their management responsibility. Bill C-242 takes an important step to facilitate longer-term visas outside the permanent stream of parents and grandparents. It improves the off-ramp that we have created. It allows a parent or grandparent to apply for a temporary resident visa for a longer period of time, not two years out of 10, but five years out of 10. That doesn't mean they're going to stay here for five years. It means they can come and go as they wish. And it allows them to purchase health insurance from a company that is not located in Canada. Many of these parents and grandparents have insurance companies of their own. Like in Canada, they must buy car insurance, they might, must buy life insurance, they must buy, buy all kinds of insurance. They have a relationship with these insurance companies. And it is likely that they will get better rates and better approvals with the companies that they are associated with. This bill allows for international companies to provide health insurance to applicants in the super visa stream with a proviso. And the proviso is this, that the minister has to approve their name. There has to be a list, and this will likely be done by ministerial instructions. And I think this is a question that, that the committee that this bill is assigned to should reflect on carefully. On the matter of cost, Buying insurance from a Canadian company, depending on your age, can go anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000. Consider the cost of flights, the, of the cost of medical checks, and the cost of insurance. You're looking at possibly at close to $10,000 every two years in the current system. For many middle class parents and grandparents, this could be a deterrent and one I believe this bill seeks to remove. The bill also has an extremely interesting nugget because it requires the Minister of Immigration and Citizenship to prepare and table a report in respect of a reduction in the minimum income requirement that the child or grandchild must meet in order for the visiting parent to be able to enter and remain in Canada. I support this measure. Studies have shown that the financial requirement for family sponsorship, either of a permanent kind or of a temporary kind, are onerous. New Canadian families are getting their lives started. We know of the hurdles they face in getting employment. I believe it is precisely at the time when they are low income that they need their families with them, the most so that they can be helped the same way that my parents helped me. This, the bill will call for the minister to table a report within one year of, the roy, of royal assent of this, of this bill so that we can find a fact-based, reasonable way forward. I do have three questions, let me put them that way. One of them is outside the scope of this bill, but is worth your consideration. There is a permanent stream of parent and grandparent immigration. It, too is dependent on income level. And since we have this offering, which is largely designed for middle income, middle class parents of immigrants um, uh, outside of Canada, I believe that the permanent stream should be privileged and prioritized for low income parents. Second, no IRCC official has ever been able to tell me the breakdown between how many parents versus grandparents enter in the permanent or the temporary stream. I think that information is important because there are too many myths surrounding this. And finally, and this is important for the committee to consider, this bill does not provide for any appeals for rejected temporary visas for parents and grandparents. Finally, on a happy note, I should say that this bill was roundly supported in the other place. In an era of hyper-partisanship, 
I am happy to say that there are moments when all parties agree and agree to fixes on immigration, which we know can be a divisive issue. It is heartening that there is growing political consensus that immigration done right is not only good for Canada, but integral to our future prosperity. Thank you, colleagues.